What's up, everybody? It's Brennan Hallsworthy Vogue Bike and Will Harden. We want to have a quick chat about some group ride etiquette things that, you know, we just did the Vogue Camp. Great group of riders, 10 people, but a few little things popped up that I think can really help a group's safety and just keep the group rolling at a good speed, a good clip, and things you might not think about. And Will said he had one thing for me to tell that I was doing wrong. So I think we're, and this is not us being like, you have to do these things. It's just a couple thoughts, marinate on them. They may or may not help you out. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is be deliberate with your movements, especially when you are on the front. I think it's very easy for us all to forget that when you're pulling, and especially maybe you guys are rolling like tempo threshold, it's like more of a pace line, and you see something up the road, there's something where you need to shift left. If you're normally riding by yourself, you come up, you shift left, you shift right, like you do it very quickly. You have to remember that someone 10 people back does not is not going to immediately see all this. Like it's a big snake. So move over a little bit before you normally have to. Hopefully there's not cars coming. The person on your left would be checking for that anyways. And like guide the snake to the left and then guide the big snake back to the right. It's these quick movements, whether you're leading or in the group that usually lead to the crashes and just weird stuff happening. Or you hear like people grabbing brake for no reason and that's a big problem. That's another tip. Don't be delicate. Like if something, if something goes wrong, like you can't just fly out of place. You're going to hit somebody. You're going to, you know, it's just be deliberate with the movements. That's my big one. Will, you're up with either of those. Yeah. Um, I think I, I want to add on to the deliberacy really quick. This is something we used a lot in Echelon in lead out trains and stuff. You have to, yeah, you have to be like as clear as possible with those movements and like intentional and preemptive. So do it like smooth and then people are predicting where you're going. Like they, they can see, oh, that guy's going right around something and do it very early. Um, like obviously um, that helps everybody stay safe and we're responsible for each other, especially when we're on the front. The thing that I wanted to talk to you about with group ride etiquette, you snot rocket straight down, just like, um, <laughs> which my is bad. fine when you ride alone. You do a lot of solo riding. Mostly. Mostly solo riding. I have I have hit somebody in the face with the snot rocket before in Europe, and they will let you know how they felt about that. Um, which, how did you get him in the face? Were you like, really like, oh, we were going, yeah, we were going hard. I do it. I'm a double barreler. So I like turned to the side and put my hand out, and he was just moving up on the outside. Oh, wow. And I just got him. So you like this? Right there. No, I don't I don't touch my face at all. I just oh, wow, it's weird. go for the full, maybe it's is that, because of Is that sweater. rock? Like raw snout rocket? What is that? <laughs> I don't know, man. Double barrel, man. Double barrel. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, you got to... Do people do this? I don't... I, I'm like always one. <laughs> There's a GCN video on it, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Um, like for real, you're just making fun. Of no, just, there yeah. is, there is. I, I've definitely watched it. Uh, I, yeah, I always go for the double barrel and and maybe move over to the side. That can help too. Um, My bad for anybody that I've snotted on. I didn't even <laughs> like. I I was thinking it's going straight down. It does. It like gets, if I spit, I like lean over a little yeah. bit. I put my hand out like a phlegmy. But yeah, okay. That is. Yeah, that's a good way to spit. Um, I almost do the same thing with the, the snot. <laughs> it gets like aerosolized behind you. <laughs> that, yeah. That's actually why when it was COVID, I was rolling solo, especially when we didn't really know what was going on. And we was like, the aerosol. I'm like, the, the aerosol. Must That's be. possible. <laughs> so stoplights. This is another thing that everybody's a little bit different. This is kind of what I've come to as feeling the safest and least pisses cars off so that they don't want to hit us. When you're coming up to a red light, say there's four cars in front of you, especially with a group of four or more people, somebody wants to like weasel up and get right next to that first car. Well, what happens in two seconds when the light turns green? Those four cars now have to pass us again. So like, why didn't we just wait and hold our place behind that fourth car? Because then guess what? It signals to the person behind us, oh, these guys and girls were here first. Let me let them get through the intersection and then move the hell over. So... I just think that we don't need to push up so that the cars then have to pass us again. Now, if there's 20 cars, it's like, yeah, we're going to go up there. But I think then you need to get up front to where you can be in front of the cars. And especially if there's a bike lane, that is the law. 
So, well, check your state, city, whatever. But let's not just be like, we're on bikes, so we're here, we come. Because that pisses people off. And I understand that's not reasonable, but that's just the fact of life. So less pissing off of the cars is a good thing. Yes, agreed. They have a very large and heavy weapon with which they can point at you like <laughs> yeah. on a whim's notice. So yeah. keep that in mind. That lady today, do you see that lady? She was pretty close to us. She was pissed. <laughs> and I was very... like, you're old and crazy. Get away. Yeah. I, I will never assume the sanity of drivers, mm. especially not in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My turn. Talking about commands. This is another thing we use in Echelon. Um, and that I've done in plenty of lead outs and breakaways, which is being very clear, concise, and simple with your commands. People, sentences do not work over like 20 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, under 20, casual conversation, you're fine with sentences, but over that, the sentence form, you can, like one word is perfect. Um, I think people should normalize those words. So up means go faster, easy, go easier. Mm. And then left and right are obvious, um, which sometimes you can point stuff out and be like, move left, um, but say left, go left. You know, um, I would not point something out on the right and be like, oh, there's something on the right. Just like say left, go left. Um, when you flick someone, when the wind's maybe changing, when you flick your left arm, does that mean to you you're moving left or the person comes around you on the left? I, I want them to come around whichever elbow is moving. Which is what I do. Yeah. But I read somewhere that it's supposed to mean that's the way you're going. And someone did that this weekend. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. He does that way. He like flicked his right arm and moved to the right. And it threw me off for a second. I was like, whoa. Hmm. I saw that happen, actually. We we were both equally confused by that. Yeah. I so I don't know. Don't do what do that. people do? <laughs> comment in the comments. How, what does that mean? I think also to yelling commands, my side note to that is no headphones on a group ride. Mm. Twice now in Florida. I was trying to communicate with this guy in a break of what we were going to do as we were getting chased. He was totally oblivious. And I'm, I know some people ride with shocks because they have somebody might I'm call connecting. them, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, what? I can't hear you. I have what? And so later I was like, yo, dude, you ride with music? And he's like, yeah. I was like, that's so dangerous. And he's like, why? He's like, I, I'm talking to you. You can't even hear me. You can't hear nothing out there. And that has happened the very next weekend. I wrote up to this guy who's riding his drops all the time. And so I'm like, hey, do you. But if you want to put your hands on the hoods, you'll be more aero and you can get lower and you'll be faster. And that would be great because we're trying to crush people. And had no, just no capability of hearing me. And then the same thing. You play music? Yeah. You probably shouldn't do that. Why? I can't hear anything. Oh. So no headphones. My third one. <laughs> okay. I think, actually, shout out to Dan Staffo. He was a uh, stalwart in the upstate New York community. And always used to piss him off when we'd be in the middle of nowhere and a whole group is yelling, car up! Meaning a car is coming from the other direction. He'd be like, dude, if you're over the yellow line, you deserve to get hit. Why do we need to be yelling car up? Da, da, da. And I always think of him when people over-exaggerate things. So I have seen newer riders. We're like coming to a stop and it's like, we're flying. They're like... <laughs> Okay, no, number one, you now have one hand on the bike coming to a stop that you're telling us about for way longer than needed. Number two, we are looking past you. You are not the parade marshal. We are not, you don't need to instruct us. We don't need jazz hands. We don't need all this craziness. Stop and then get your hands back on the bike and do what you're doing. I'm more following your motions than your motions. Mm -hmm. And when we're passing, you know, a pothole or something, like sometimes, sometimes there's a wave that's maybe like something crazy is happening. But even then, like point it out, get control of your bike. People should be looking up the road past you also. And if you're in a group, say of, you know, say you're in the middle of a pack. I mean, it's up to the people right behind those people leading. Like we are a team together. There's a ton of trust. So you don't need to go crazy with the hand motions. Definitely don't be yelling because, again, we can't hear you back there. It's like, what is this person saying that it's not audible to us? Goes back to the first thing. Just point out what you got to point out and then be deliberate with your movements. Like, 
it's you are the leader. It is up to you to be looking. And then to that point, if you are on, you're going up the road and you're on the left hand side, you also need to be looking at the line of the person on your right. Because if you see a pothole coming, guess what that means? You're going to have to move to the left. So don't make that person be like, oh, hey, pothole, move left. And then you guys, like, you need to be thinking everything. Like, I, it's just people don't take that seriously. And everyone's safety behind you depends on that. So remember, like, you are the leader at that point. Um, yeah. I agree. I, yeah, I think being deliberate with pointing stuff out is good. Sometimes if you're slowing down, you can do the, like, slowing down motion. Specifically, I think that works at lights. Um if you're slowing down for a light, like it's turning yellow, you can be like slowing or stopping, yell it really loud. Smaller groups is better. I always prefer to ride in a group of less than six. That's my golden number. It's like anything more than six. And I expect some random things are going to start happening. Right. Um, you're not going to get a great endurance ride in. And if you do, cherry on top, but expect randomness. Um, so that could be an offshoot other conversation like yeah. cardiac wise you get a good endurance right in but yeah power is going to be a lot of a lot of zone one which my euro counterparts will be like <laughs> you're still hit that point by 5.6 intensity factor that's what we want i mean yes no i don't know i think both are good and i think my last comment also to that of uh, this came up another weekend a guy rolled up to us and he simply said to somebody, whoa, man, you're trying to get killed out there, huh? Okay. Kind of kind of cutesy comment. And the cyclist that we were with lights into this guy with a couple curse words. And I'm like, dude, he, I mean, he, yeah, he didn't have to say that to us. But I've watched this rider before. And he is kind of all over the place and in, way over in the lane where he doesn't need to be. And I'm like, yo, man, you don't need to yell at that person like face to face swearing. I'm like, we're all right here, too. We're in your group. And he goes, I wasn't talking to you. I said, no, man, but you're talking for us. Because now what if that guy sees me? He sees, maybe he's a cyclist. And now he sees my brand and I'm rolling with dickhead. So don't be that person. And I'm, I try to remind myself of that. I get fired up and I want to yell at somebody. I mean, today, this lady had the whole lane and is ripping on the horn. And blah, blah, blah. so I, we caught her at the light. I said, hey, I said, why are you so angry? And she wouldn't answer me. I said, well, you know, you had the whole road. I hope you have a great day. She feels like an idiot. I mean, she has to. So maybe she doesn't, but yeah. Yeah, I think with drivers, I'm always cautious to, like I, I just will not interact as much as I possibly can and just re represent cyclists the best I, like stay as far over as I can, don't get in the way and just like, don't use profane hand signals. That never looks good. Um, it's right. not a good representation of anything. Even yelling can be pretty rough. Like no one has ever learned something yes. Getting from a cyclist yelling at them. Right. I don't think anybody's taken something and been like, wow, I really should be nicer to this person, this mm -hmm. kind, this kind man yelling at me in uh, his underwear on the side of the road. So <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> I think that's, a, I try to remind myself of that because I do catch myself getting hot and it's like, that's not going to change anything. That's not helping the next cyclist that this person encounters. So. Good tips. Uh, what are your group ride tips or things that you notice that people should work on? And if you like these types of videos, let us know. We're still doing all the interviews. Um, we might try and go live. We try to do that and do some more like answering cues or just chatting about bikes. I don't know. I'm obsessed with the sport. So more ways we can engage and have a good time with it. Let's do it. So closing out a mega week, we're going to maybe go eat some food. Hope you have a great week of training ahead. Can't wait to rest tomorrow. Are you riding? You are riding tomorrow. I'm riding tomorrow. Mountain bike, three hours. What? Oh, so wait. What's your what's your seven day total going to be from Monday to Sunday? Still, still thirty. Okay, and a half. I'm like plus one hour. This is a this is the segue to where we do a podcast about not compare yourself to other people because <laughs> I've done fifteen hundred TSS in five days and I hear he's riding tomorrow. Now I'm like, wait, should I be riding tomorrow? No, no, no. No, no. listen to your plan. Talk to your coach. Get a coach. And that, see, I, I always feel weird saying that on these videos because we're coaches. Don't get a coach. Do whatever you want. See ya. <laughs>